Well, hi folks, and welcome. This week, join us as we head to the land down under. Yes, we're in Australia, and I have the amazing privilege of hanging out with Linda and Bronte Davis at their Two Songs Animal Sanctuary. We'll be talking about how they got started with the sanctuary, why it's important, and why education and awareness is the key to saving these amazing creatures. Plus, we get to hang out with some kangaroos as well. All that and so much more on this episode of the Mind, Body and Soul podcast with John Morris. Welcome to the Mind, Body and Soul podcast with John Morris. Inspiring, motivating and educating you in finding balance in the craziness of day-to-day -day life. Learn from and listen to a man who has a wealth of life experience, from business to bodybuilding, artist to author, and has learned to deal with his own physical and mental wellness. But that's not all. Each week John interviews and picks the minds of special guests from all around the world and from all walks of life. From actors to authors, wrestlers to warriors, business owners to life coaches, and so much more. Welcome to today's episode of the Mind, Body, and Soul podcast with John Morris. Okay, well, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, and children of all age, welcome to the Mind, Body, and Soul podcast, where we help you find balance in the craziness of day-to-day -day life. I am, as always, your host, John Morris, and welcome to the show that helps you find inspirational, motivational, and educational content. My guests today, I am so excited and delighted to get to chat with these wonderful, wonderful people. This is going to be a show like no other folks, I can honestly promise you that, because my guests today are the proprietors of the Two Songs Sanctuary from South Australia, where they house, I believe, 22 kangaroos and three wombats. And it is amazing to have you both here today, um, Linda and Bronte Davis, welcome. And, and this little guy that's in front of us as well, a little kangaroo, it is fantastic to have you here. Thank you so much for being uh, our guest today. How are you both doing today? Oh, really good, thanks. Yeah, a busy day as usual, but yeah, really good. And it's now, Two Song Sanctuary is now, I've uh, got 23 kangaroos. We wow. have a little, a little boy, Basil, come in today. So, <laughs> sad. It's, it's always, a, you know, sad, but, um, but you know, happy moment when we get another little orphan that comes yeah. in. So Basil came in today, and uh, yeah, now that makes number 23. Wow, that's incredible. That's incredible. And I've got to ask as well, because, you know, I, I know a lot of people in, in, in Australia will know about you guys and people on Instagram as well, but for the worldwide audience that's getting to see this, which I'm really excited about, tell us a little bit about yourselves and the work that you do. So five years ago, um, Bronte and myself went, we need to buy some property mm. and we need to actually help these little babies and, and create a space that's really close to their natural environment because, you know, it's one thing to, you know, help out something, um, but they actually need to, they have needs, you know. Yeah. So having a kangaroo and, and putting it in the backyard just isn't going to cut it, you know. <laughs> So um, we we went out and spoke really nicely to our bank manager, and we bought almost four hectares, and wow. we have enclosed um, about a two and a half acre um, enclosure for the kangaroos, which entails a 1.8 metre high um, corrugated iron fence, which creates a visual barrier with three foot uh, wire on top, and then we've got about an acre. The, the wombats. So we we feel like we've really, really um, created as close as possible yeah. um, enough space for them. They've got natural food. They've, you know, that um, you know, they help with my waxing. <laughs> it's incredible just to watch this. No, it hey? really is what amazing. Are you doing? The, the perks of getting to do this show are really, really awesome. I have to say. I've got to ask as well, for, for both of you, what was early life like for you guys um, growing up in, in Southern Australia? Well, we, we grew up in regional South Australia. <laughs> and um, So if you were good at sport, it meant you didn't really succeed unless, unless your parents were really rich because okay. everything that happened 
happened, you know, you had to go over, you know, quite a, a long way away yeah. to um, to the big cities and stuff like that. Um, we made our own fun. We would get an old car bonnet and, <laughs> and go down to the mud swamps and, and drag, you know, we were all driving cars by 12 years wow. old, pulling the car bonnets around. And um, I grew up on a farm and, you know, like we'd be... Um, you know, milk and the goats and squirting each other. I'd be squirting my brothers with the milk, and you know, we'd we'd have pig. We had pigs, and I had a horse, and and yeah, like it was uh, just well, good, just good wholesome fun. Being yeah. just in a small town, if we got up to mischief, normally your, your parents knew about it before you got home. And yeah, just, uh, everyone knew everybody. Look, the same as small towns everywhere, I guess. Yeah, yeah. that's that and, is, and, and you know, we we basically if we did something naughty down the street. Um, that person kicked our bums and then we got home and, and mum kicked our bums as well. So, you know, like, yeah, it was, it was great. It, it takes the village and I still, I still live by them, <laughs> them, um, them, that motto too. Even with today with these kangaroos, it takes a village to raise a child yeah. or a kangaroo or a wombat or, and you know, we have great supporters and stuff like all over um, the world. And it is fantastic how, um, you know, everybody wants to get behind and actually help. It's just Absolutely. fantastic. Like, we've made some, um, like, I, I feel like I've got some amazing friends and um, I've never met them. Yeah, absolutely. So, you know, how cool is that? It, it's amazing that the, the world is a lot smaller now in a lot of ways with social media, obviously, and, and people now can literally reach people all over the world in such amazing ways through the power of social media. It's, it's, it is really wonderful. Um, and is. I concur with what you were saying in terms of, you know, if, if you did something wrong in school or down the street and your parents knew about it, uh, or your parents would know about it before you actually got back home, um, that's obviously <laughs> changed a lot now because, I, I don't know about Australia, but certainly over here, if you get a neighbor that says something about your son or daughter, it's usually the parents that are just like, oh, that's terrible. You can't be saying that. How dare you? Say? And it's completely flipped. Um, yeah, people are scared to say anything negative because they're going to get drilled. Yeah, and, and yeah, you know, there's a lot of entitlement in the world these days, but it's a know, changing world for sure. Go around. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. And it's a changing world for sure. Um, you know, what was, what was, I suppose, school like? For, for both of you? Was it something you enjoyed? Was it something that, because we get a lot of guests on here that are like, I absolutely hated school. I couldn't wait to go and do something else. You know, and, and it's other people are like, I completely loved it. I couldn't, you know, I was, I was so sad to leave. What was it like for you guys? Oh, I think we tolerated it for as long as we had to, I think. Oh, I, um, loved, I loved school because it was, I lived on a farm. Right. So like, you know, my best mates were my animals. And so I loved going to school because I got like I didn't. I don't know if I actually had the whole concept of school and education <laughs> down pat, but I love school because I got to meet my friends and and you know, and Bronte and I went to school together, the same right. school, um, and um, yeah, like Bronte was really smart, and I probably could have been, but <laughs> <laughs> like yeah, we would. I was just keen to get out, get 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 happening, you know, like make it all happen, like. You know, my mum back in them days, mum said you can leave school whenever you whenever you get a job. Yeah. And yeah. jobs were so Which easy were much to easier find. To get, yeah. Yeah. Like the kids today, they it, it, there isn't those jobs that we had. Like so and so easily accessible. If we didn't mm. like that job, we moved on to the next, etc., etc., etc. You know, until we found the job we liked. You know, I mean, my current job, I've been there ten years. Um, prior that, twelve and a half or something, but. You know, like, yeah, it's just, I don't know if they've got that security these days in, in the world. Yeah, much um, different. Yeah, it is a lot different and a lot more scarier, I suppose, yeah. uh, where security's oh, concerned. Excuse, but... me. excuse me, it might have. <laughs> Sorry? Oh, we've got... Oh, no, she's eating the blankets and things, so I thought I'd get her something to chew off. So, yeah, um, yeah, it's, it's, um, it's a lot different and... It's interesting. Mm -hmm. You know, what's interesting in my world, um, which is my little yeah. space of, of block of land, you know, is, you know, we could go ahead and we could kill all the bees mm -hmm. and 
the world's going to disappear. Yeah. But if we kill all the humans, the world's going to flourish. Yeah. And I think we really need to take that sort yeah. of consideration. Like greed isn't mm-hmm. everything. To give back is so important. You know what I mean? Yeah. And seriously, we have tried to give back to this wildlife mm-hmm. with a gig, you know, that we're doing. And as small as it may be or as large as people may seem it is, um, it's a very big financial cost. Yeah. But but it gives us so much more yeah. and and it's not just about the animals. Like for instance, like you just said, the world is such a small place. Mm-hmm. We have made so many friendships and and had so many it's just been mind blowing how people have gone, We wanna help they yeah. you know, help make this acre you know, we spent something like twenty grand on a on wombats, you know, like people think we're just crazy, yeah. you know. Look, it, it's a great trip. They give a bit of pleasure, especially in these times, because it's a bit uncertain. And yeah. A lot of people are doing it tougher than um, than we have in South Australia. So it's nice that uh, people can um, have a look at these little guys and get some enjoyment from them. And, and that's another thing, you know. Mm. While we are, are are being enriched by them friendships that we never expected, our posts are in turn giving these people yeah. hope laughter do you know what i mean like i never thought it's just everyday life for me yeah. you know but what they're like we have no idea what you know europe and and you guys are going through with the covid and stuff like that we're stuck in this covid hasn't even made it to portland yeah. do you know what i yeah. mean like um it's we're oblivious to how bad it could mm-hmm. really be yeah, I mean, so, certainly, so I was just going to say that, you know, that, that, I mean, there's so much to unpack there with what you said, because, you know, I, I've just finished writing my first book, and one of the chapters that's in it is called All of Life is a Giving Back, and sometimes life will take things from you whether you want it to or not. Other times, you know, to have that mentality like what you've just said there, you know, of, you know, if, if we look after the bees, if we look after the animals, and you can actually start to see that everyone can benefit together, um, everybody has that, you know, part to play in life. And I think human beings have done a terrible job historically of just gimme, 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 uh, bleed everything dry and then move on to the next place. Um, I heard a, 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 a one tabloid somewhere that a popular film director was now going to start looking at mining the moon. He was going to try mining asteroids and for all these other resources that were out there. And you think, what is, you know, what, what are you thinking? Um, you know, and it's like you say, I mean, it's interesting and fantastic what you guys are doing. I really, really love it. And, uh, you know, again, so many people obviously are getting behind you guys. Yeah, we're, but, we're only like a little grain on the scales of balance here. But I guess these poor little guys, like I said, we're just trying to, um, you know, we live in a being very rural and we and re- rely on the farming and we rely on the industry that's uh, on the peninsula that, that mm-hmm. we live on. Unfortunately, um, uh, it's taken over from a lot of these little guys, which is, uh, I guess, why. Um, we're stuck with these little fellas for the next uh, <laughs> 20 or so years because there's no no real safe release area no. for these, yeah. um, especially when they've, they've lost their mob and their family. And as I said, they're, um, you know, they've had everything sort of uh, mm-hmm. unfortunately taken away from them. A little bit due to the outer balance again. Yeah. Most of uh, our little guys come from, um, uh, you know, where they've been saved from uh, the mothers and, you know, road accidents and things. But um, they would like to feel that we're just uh, restoring a little bit of balance, um, you know, on the, uh, the ones that we can help. And it's fantastic that you're doing that as well. It really, really is. Sorry, Lisa, go ahead. Oh, Linda, sorry. No, no, I'll talk all day. <laughs> you, you, you have your turn. I, I, I was going to ask <laughs> you as well, <laughs> where did the interest for for animals really begin with, with, the, with the pair of you? Oh, look, I think everyone's always had, um, uh, look, not too many houses. Being a country sort of town, I suppose, you know, everyone's got, you know, you know, even in town, everyone's got like a dog or yeah. you know something for sale. I guess you know, Linda, I suppose, being out on the farm, it's sort of come from horses and pigs, and um, you just used to having animals around. And um, as I said, that uh, well, Linda had a kangaroo many years ago. You know, it's probably um, wow. yeah, it was probably that little bit of a um, when I was young and stupid, <laughs> and, and, and pretty much didn't have the right facilities to care for it right. properly. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. And, and and it was, uh, you know, it was all a little bit about me rather than about, the, you know, what I should be doing. Uh-huh. So um, that the, the kangaroo was passed on to somebody who was actually 
more sensible and responsible than but they so. I think it's really yeah. interesting what you said there, Linda, is, you know, a lot of people, and I see this all over social media now, and I'm sure the, the two of you probably do as well, that so many people now are having, I, I can't call them pets, but animals like raccoons and bears, and, and they're having them live in their house. You know, there was one guy, I know for a fact, that was living in a downstairs apartment, you know, and this grizzly bear would just, you know, wander in quite happily, and you're thinking, guys, these are not something that, you know, can, can be, you know, uh, kept really as pets. Um, and exactly what you said that if you're going to do it, you've got to do the research and the work that's there and make sure the sanctuary, in your case, is obviously something that can be um, properly facilitated as well. It, it's not just a small thing because, you know, if you've got a you've raccoon, got for take. example, they are the, the, the vicious in some ways, as lovely as they are. And I love raccoons, but they can be very, very vicious. Yeah, sell a wombat, mate. Yeah, like yeah, yeah. Would absolutely. you like to see my wombat bite? <laughs> but, but the point is, the point is, kangaroos are not meant to be inside watching yeah. telly eat coffee fix. <laughs> like, the bottom line is, um, we had a kangaroo that broke its leg, and yeah. it did spend 12 weeks inside. You know, I slept on the uh, cement floor with it on a dog bed because <laughs> I was so worried about it, you know, like a totally extreme da 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 we spent something like five thousand dollars on getting a fit through the vet right. but as soon as it was better and could go back to its mob it went back to its mob yeah. you do not bring your you know these animals these little baby gorgeous little <laughs> brothers they will stay inside yeah. until they gradually get introduced and then they won't come in again yeah you know unless of course something unforeseen and you know, bad happens, yeah, but they won't come inside because an animal, like a wildlife, are not meant to be inside. Yeah. They shouldn't be. They're not. They need to be um, not exploited, um, but to be in them. You know, like I do um, video a lot of my yeah. animals, mm -hmm. and we know them name by name. Da da da. But they're all in their natural environment yeah. as close as possible. Yeah. We we um, keep the babies inside until a certain time and then we introduce them slowly outside. You know, these guys go outside twice a day, every day. Yeah. They need muscle development. They need to run. They need to have a big enough space that grass can grow. If your space hasn't got grass growing naturally, you've overpopulated yeah. it. Burr, it's not you know yeah it's, it's not, it's rocket, not rocket, science. rocket science yeah it's <laughs> it's just common sense you know and the bottom line is if we all walk together as one that's when we're going to make a real difference yes. yeah. if we start being greedy or we start being, it's just not healthy for anybody yeah we uh, find that because they're because they're hand reared and because they come very accustomed, um, which is one of the reasons the, the, the government don't allow release in South Australia. Right. Um, but there's a slight modification, I suppose. But we don't do um, too many visitors, and it, it's really about the animals. It's um, it, it's their area. We I mean we get our friends and our, our people who always want to come along yeah. and bring their kids. Look, it's um, it's a, a very select few who get to uh, step inside the gate there. But mainly, yeah. mainly it's the people that actually supporter mm -hmm. so if they have enough heart yeah. to put their hands in their pocket and buy the food that's it well guess what yeah they show me that they those guys really mean you know yeah. are there for the animal you know they're not just hey can i bring the kids out so we can you know i, I growl at the kids far too much you know stop running stop yelling stop this stop that you know it's it's an environment for the animals it's yeah. not about yeah, it's not about a petting, petting zoo or, yeah. or that. And as you said before, look, um, the wombats more so than kangaroos, but they all have that um, bit of an instinct, I suppose. Mm -hmm. um, I've had stand-ups with, um, you know, one of our large males, lovely, rocky, beautiful kangaroo. Just, um, I was getting kisses when I was doing their feed earlier wow. on. But, um, yeah, one morning he was just having a bit of a boy moment. And, <laughs> you know, just uh, they wanted to sort of um, stand up and have a bit of a, you know, take Took let, him let, on. let me know that he was the boss he was going to take me <laughs> that was so funny i was inside having breakfast this is like really hilarious do you struggle with motivation feel yourself procrastinating a lot have amazing ideas and dreams but struggle with the concepts of how to get from where you are to where you want to be 
or maybe looking for something a little bit simpler like wanting to get fit or maybe wanting to lose a few pounds and tighten things up? Are you someone that struggles with anxiety or trauma or even depression? You're not alone. Many people around the world do. Hi folks, I'm John Morris. And for the last two decades, I've been working with people from all over the world in all walks of life to really understand human beings, the concept, the behaviors, and ultimately the reasons why. And I've had the privilege of coaching and working with folks just like you, that maybe are struggling with anxiety or depression or trauma or wanting to get ahead, wanting to maybe build some long-term success, but have no idea how to begin. This is what I do. And with John Morris Life Coaching, you're in really, really good hands. Why can I say this? Because you're not only gonna get an experienced life coach, you're also gonna get somebody that has a wide variety of experiences, from youth ministry and working with teenagers and children, to someone who's worked with drug addicts and alcoholics, people that have day-to-day -day dependency issues, to, to somebody maybe just like you, that just wants that little bit of encouragement, wants that little bit of motivation, and wants support to get to that next level. With John Morris Personal Life Coaching, you're in really good hands. A lot of my clients would tell you if they were here now that one of the greatest assets to John Morris Life Coaching is you can see things exactly as you want to see them without fear of being controlled and conformed like a lot of therapists and coaches do. We help you right where you're at to get to the place that you want to be, step by step, to figure out a plan. So if this sounds like something that you would be interested in, having that support, motivation, encouragement, and even education, should you need it, then get in touch with me today. I would love to hear from you. Places are limited, so please don't delay. We've got a very, very small window of opportunity remaining. We all need help from time to time, but the difference between success and failure, achieving our dreams and maybe just letting our dreams go by, depends on the level of help that we have available and that we're willing to accept. So get in touch with me today at John Morris Life Coaching. You'll be glad you did, and I'll see you soon. Because I was inside doing something, and you know, I had breakfast, whatever, and Bronte walked in just like his eyes were so big, and he was like, check this, this is what Rocky did. And it was like, you know, having Dad have that full blue yeah. with the teenager, yeah. you know what I mean? <laughs> walked in just like, Mum, do something about it. And I'm like, he's an animal. What do you expect? Oh, you know, they, all, they all have it. Like, look, they're, they're, really they're all great. We, we bottle feed 14 of the grown-up ones, which is which is great if we've got to give them medicine or something, because yeah. um, most of them will come up when they're called. There's... Um, a couple that have come to us with different circumstances that are a little bit more warier or, or a little bit, um, you know, less accustomed to having people around. I mean, we've got a little um, a little uh, grey kangaroo there that was uh, um, rescued from where we had a, a, a bushfire last year. Okay. And uh, she was sort of in a quarantine area, so she wouldn't hop too much. She had very burnt feet. But um, now she's slowly working her way around. She's certainly not one that we can uh, pick up and cuddle. Yeah. But uh, she approaches us now and she's used to us and... She's found her place in the mob out there. Okay. And we've also found her niche too. That's good. So we work out that loves carrots. Yeah. So, of course, <laughs> you know, you always go through their stomach and you'll win, you know, every yeah, time. Yeah, absolutely. We were able, yeah, we were able to find out what she, she liked and she then in turn starts trusting us. That's, and I think that's a really important thing to remember, you know, for, for anybody that's looking after animals full stop, because you see this a lot when, pe you know, people adopt dogs, cats, in your case, kangaroos and wombats, you know, they've got their own personalities, they've got their own understanding of how life is and their own perspective, and you can't just expect them to come in with you and expect them to do everything, you know, your way. So it's fantastic that you've done that. I do... But, go on. but John, just, uh, just to point that off, I don't think it just stops with animals. No, no, absolutely. You know, like it's in relationships. Yeah. Full stop. You yeah. know, like it, it's with your own children. It's with a person you meet down the street and choose to make a friendship out of. Absolutely. It. If you have no respect and you have no no way of actually accepting them for the person they are, guess what? It's not going to work. That's you might it. as well bail out straight now. Yeah. You know what I mean? Absolutely. And, and it goes for animals, it goes for humans, it goes for... And that's why it's really important to work out um, who your niche is with, you know, and is it worthwhile? Absolutely. Because, you know... And, and you did mention the, the thing is we've got um, 23 wide mm -hmm. range of personalities down there. <laughs> um, they're not 
all following the leader like sheep. Um, you know, we've got the, you know, like I said, we've, we've got everything. You know, we've got the uh, the cranky ones, we've got the uh, selfish ones, we've got the greedy ones, we've got the, um, you know, there's the, you know, Macy, you know, the most placid, um, you know, and they, they've all got their different personalities. And we know them all like, like, you know, like our kids, really. Absolutely. So, kids are pretty cool. The, the wombats, the, the same. Um, why do well? He's my favourite. He loves me and doesn't seem to love anyone else. <laughs> uh, but um, yeah, Maxie and, and Molly. They're, that's, uh, not, that's why uh, I'm his favourite because I seem to like him and no one else. Does. <laughs> it's a bit unfair. I think Linda did all the oiling and kept him warm and the night, the sleepless him. nights. He did was all, up all the feeds and. Um, uh, and then he kept uh, to a teenager. My my sister had open heart surgery. And I had to go over and support her for a right. month, right? So I went over to support her for that first month and she ended up having difficulties. So next minute, I had to come back. So I spent a month over, came back, spent three weeks here. Then I had to go back to Adelaide when the actual operation. So it was two months I was totally away. In that two months, he thought I'd dogged him and, and just wouldn't even be my friend anymore. Oh, it was like, dear. he'd started attacking me and everything. So, of course... <laughs> I was like, oh, wow, I did all that hard work, and he reaps the reward. It's just <laughs> it's, so it's, bad. It is, it's very funny with Wadu. I don't know why, because really he will, really will like attack them like a stranger, but um, tonight, that's every other night, he'll fall asleep after I'm on my lap, and I'll go over to his yeah. um, well, little house and get him a bottle, and um, he'll just, um, yeah, we usually either fall asleep on my lap, or he, um, or he tries to get the spot where I'm sitting. Uh, he'll sort of push me away so he can just lay on the warm spot, and then I'll, I'll leave him there. But... Um, <laughs> Is, um, but they all have their mad minute. The wombats, they um, like you said before, with, with animals, they you've got to learn to read them. The wombats, yep. um, they wander our main yard when we let them out for a little bit more space to, to roam around, and um, and they're they're fine. But they call it like a mad minute. You've just got to you've just got to watch out for um, you know, and that's when it's time to put your legs up on the chair or yeah. uh, or just, um, you know get up on something a little bit higher because they just. Um, <laughs> They bite when they're happy, they bite when they're sad, they bite when they're a bit amorous, and they bite. This is, it's a part of what they do. And yeah. You've just got to be ready, to, ready for it. I wanted to ask you as well, if you can talk to us a little bit about the story of the sanctuary, how it came together, and you know the, the development that you guys have gone through to, to build this amazing facility. Oh, well, <laughs> people see this face. I used to be so much better looking. All, all now the, I'm just burnt out. All the animal carers look like that. We've all got holes in our clothes, yeah. and we all look ten years older than we are. <laughs> um, we, um, it, it's like everything, I suppose. It's um, you know, uh, you know, two turns to three, turns to five, and and then as we learn more, and, and and like I say, social media is great. You've yep. got in contact with other carers. You can start to see what people were trying to do, and and um, we made a commitment back then, I suppose, that we would um, try and go to the the biggest areas. Um, Pop the shelters to, uh, you know, as much as we can to make it natural. You know, we've had, like I said, a lot of help. Our local quarries, uh, the, you know, the DK quarries it is locally. They've um, supplied us concrete pipes, and they understand, you know, what we're doing. It's, um, you know, their, their drivers are very um, conscious of the animals when they come to the living here as well. It's, um, you know, they've been very good. Thankfully, they do adapt um, to neighbouring noises, and um, you know, that look. No, we we have a tractor and you know lawnmower and a lawn tractor as well, and um, they've got used to that. But um, it's it started off with um, I, I guess we probably didn't quite realise the extent of the um, the fencing, and then of course when the wombats came along, it's um, uh, the, the just one little ball of muscle that's designed to escape. <laughs> every year. Um, so we tried to get in the biggest area, but unfortunately it all needs to be meshed. That's yeah. under the whole ground that. Uh, uh, you know the fencing and gates and things. Everything's double latched, uh, but um, you know, just be, for their own safety, I suppose. And as, as I'll say to everyone, I suppose um, the nine foot fences, which are pretty much around the whole property now, it's um, are designed um, in, in the semi-rural area we live in as well. Uh, as, as well as keeping sort of um, the animals safe and our animals in, it's keeping any of the other animals or yeah. feral animals out. Well, you know, foxes and. Um, you know, cats and anything that um and kids yeah, yeah definitely oh, and, you know, like you know because we we've, we've got neighbors whose child doesn't understand barriers you know he sees an animal i want to play you yeah know? and we had him like in our property without any parent supervision wow. now that's wonderful 
if we do, if he doesn't come across my wombat yeah. who doesn't know him, you're on his territory, and he bites him. You know, like so. Um, it's it's an imperative that we keep everybody mm-hmm. safe when you take you know you take on this back to that responsibility. You need to actually be responsible. You know, across the whole yeah. uh, picture. Yeah, so definitely. for people yeah, that don't understand. Yeah. We try to keep it as natural as we can. Being still fairly new, I guess it's um, a lot of fencing, but we've done a lot of planting, a lot of tree planting, and hopefully a lot of it will be hidden and disguised. And, and um, you know, thankfully, um, the, the kangaroo, um, the, the big paddock they're running down there, uh, doesn't directly, um, you know, there's no road frontage on any side, so that's been a real bonus as well. So they that's have a lot good. more there. Because, like you say, I mean, you know, if a, if a kid, you know, and again, just to emphasize it, if a kid gets into the wombat sanctuary, as you say, they don't know him. You know, it's it's a small child, you know, and like you said, there's this little ball of muscle that can move when it needs to. Um, exactly, no, it's, it's it's not a small thing. Um, you know, and and then you know, little little Timmy gets sent hurtling by this little wombat and things, and then all of a sudden, it's oh well, I can't believe this, but you know. Fair's fair, you know, he shouldn't have been on your property. You know, no, so... That's a, that's not how it works, though. No. Yeah, but that is part of responsibility. We, we've got... It's not how it works. Yeah. Mum and Dad want it shot. In yeah. The story. And they, you know, then they sue and blah, blah, yeah. blah. No, little Johnny wasn't supposed to be on the property, and where was Mum and Dad? Yeah. Um, it comes back to that's taking that's that responsibility for people's own actions. Yeah, we live in a human world, though. Uh, you know? True, so, yes. It doesn't really work like that. Yeah. I think we've tried to tick all the boxes there. As I said, it's um, uh, yeah, a lot of locked gates and a, a, a lot of, um, you know, there's no access to the animals without getting through one property yeah. first. And you know, the, Not that the Avon lady calls here, but you can't accidentally um, walk into one of the um, yeah. uh, animal enclosures without having to, uh, you know, come past first. But like you say, it's surprising how big it grew quickly mm. um, regarding the fencing and the uh, the shelters and the enclosures, we, we probably um, would have had a bit more for ourselves here, I guess. Well, I was just about to say, yeah. we actually um, used to live in a nice two-storey, four-bedroom house, mm-hmm. and um, now we live in a shed. <laughs> well, this part... I do so, not like God's yeah. honest. Oh, wow. I'm not thinking, we actually, you know, like, like, I'll just give you a little view of our shed, though, you know, like, so, you know... That's, you know... That's we, a big shed. You know, that's as big as some people's no, apartments. No, 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 yeah. no. It's not a big shed, but, you know, like... <laughs> so, yeah, it's like we it are is. literally living in a shed, um, in a portion of the shed that yeah. Bonte's pointed out, sort of thing, while we uh, create all the enclosures, finish, keep the animals safe, then we will try and start to build a house <laughs> that we can live in. You know, it, it gets a bit much with the spiders. Me and the spiders were like this. Yeah. I'm not really keen on them. And um, we've had a sleepy lizard in, in the shed. Um, the first snake I'm out of there, I can tell you right now. Just, just uh, while we're talking about snakes, I had a friend of mine in Australia, the first client that I ever had in Australia, and she was getting roof repairs done to her house. And she lives out in the outbacks and, and wherever it is. I can't actually remember offhand. But she came home after a nursing shift one day, opened her living room door to see this giant python coming in through the top of the ceiling. And I was just like, so what did you do? And she's like, I just closed the door and I left it there and hopefully it'll go go away by its own volition. I was just like, ah, okay. Because obviously snakes and spiders in Australia are very different to snakes and spiders over here in the UK. You know, it's it's uh, it's, it's a whole other like game for you guys. Like it's what, sorry. What are they like over there? Uh, they, they tend to be, you know, I mean, you can get them maybe the size of a, of a sellotape roll. You know, you get some good size ones, but nothing fatal over here. Whereas, obviously, in uh-huh. where you guys are, there are uh, tarantulas, big spiders, small spiders, anything bites you, and it's, you know. Yeah, everything bites you, yeah. Mm. Yeah, we've got, in, well, I guess, the, yeah, we've got our red-backed spiders here, I suppose. We've, we've had um, brown brown snakes, which are not the ones you want to have yeah. on, on your uh-huh. property. Red belly black ones, we haven't had one here, but we've also gone to a lot of trouble to try and snake. But you, you never can, as I said, there's, uh, there, we had a little sleep lizard or shingle back um, in the shed, which yeah. is still in the other part of the shed. He got away under the, under the shelves before, but he'll hopefully um, eat some uh, spiders or something while he's there. That'll, yeah. be, that'll be great. Absolutely. But, um, 
Yeah, no, a house would be lovely to get away from. Um, unfortunately, like I said, animal care is bad clothes, worn out looking faces. Um, worn out and, looking and we live, um, someone says, you know, another thing we live with all the time is poo. Yeah. Um, you know, it's a, a, a big part of uh, everything we've got, poos, and actually, which is, and, and that's also, a, a, especially the kangaroos and the wombats, it's a great thing. Uh, for us to gauge their health as well. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Um, absolutely. So, 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 probably enough, enough of the poo subject, probably. <laughs> wombats. Wombats poo square. Oh, right, okay. <laughs> that's yeah. an interesting uh, one. Wombats poo is square. It doesn't roll, so that's really good. Yeah. See, the, the well, fact that the is... Problem. The facts that people don't understand and don't get to know aside from this show, it's, it's wonderful. I wanted to ask you, following on from, from, from obviously, square poos and, and kangaroo poos, um, you know, what does an average D look like for you guys? Oh, it's horrible. <laughs> so we wake up and Bronte, Bronte I, don't, I don't think Bronte sleeps very much at all. Like he'll, he'll be the first up. If anything, well, hang on, let's start again. Midnight, like we start at yeah. midnight. Wow. Last night, um, we had this little girl get out of her pouch. And um, so I was up at 1.30 in the morning giving her a fee. Then I went back to bed. Bonty got up at 5.30, 6 o'clock, something like that. He makes all the bottles up. Then I come down and we both feed the animals. Um, like now there's three, you know. Yesterday there was only two. Yeah. Um, so then we take them out to the paddock and we um, let them have a run and, you know, have to give them exercise and, and some mental stimulation and they, they sniff each other and sniff all the others and all the others come up to say good morning and we sometimes take some wheat picks out there, sometimes we take a carrot out there, etc, etc. It depends on how yeah. much of a treat we want to give them and, and we monitor them like we won't give them wheat fix a process stuff every day that's like a real treat but anyway to cut a long story short they walk over broken glass for a piece of bread they just you know that sort of stuff which but, is a no-no but we don't give it to yeah. them and yeah. so then um we bring these back we set them all up and then we go off to work so then bronte knocks off at two he comes home and he feeds the the, um, uh, the kangaroos the little ones again that's the, the next feeding thankfully they're on um They've progressed now to three feeds a day, which is yeah. in with our human lifestyle. There's no more two in the morning yeah. feeds. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Last, probably 11 o'clock, half past 10, 11 at night, half past five, six in the morning, and then in the middle of the day. Um, so then I get home at four, or half past four, and um, we'll let the wombats out for a run, you know. Um, we'll take these little fellas over to the paddock again for another run. Bronte in the meantime, usually, you know, fixing something, doing something, mowing a lawn, you know, blah, 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 just maintaining. Um, then we feed, like, 14 big kangaroos still. Um, we do that. We'll, we'll give them the, their bottle feed. We'll, uh, and then we check their, um, you know, check their water, check their water and their yeah. food. They've got, the, they've got bedding over in their shoulders, the sport little buggers, so we usually just uh, re-tuck their blankets in there around their beds to get them sort of set up for the night, clean up uh, any mess that they've made. Um, we've got a little rescue pony as well, so wow. uh, that one, uh, we normally... Uh, yeah, no, how we got sucked into that. <laughs> no, we, uh, it was a, a Facebook giveaway that no one wanted. Yeah, so and this pony well. ended up living in the backyard of a, like a normal home, mm -hmm. and and seriously, he was eating dog biscuits, and oh, like, wow. I was just like, oh, we've got to take it, and we did. And, and then we got two dogs. I don't know how we got them either. Nobody wanted them. And, uh, oh, God, I don't know. You know, sometimes people just think, you know, we're a bit soft, but we are. <laughs> so, yeah. No, normally in the feeding, they're in between, you know. And so then in between all that, we've got a wash or blanket. Like, so washing is our biggest nightmare. Uh -huh. Yeah, that's the thing. Normally, not... normally, we, like, our last feed is at 10, 10.30 at night. So normally we finish our day about 11, on, like we go to bed. Wow. You know, we yell and, well, I yell and scream a lot at Bronte and I'm grumpy ass and, and he's just so understanding. He's the best thing that's ever happened to me, you know, and what we're doing. Because, you know, like I actually, um, at, like I work because we, we have to work. Yeah, to, of course. Yeah, yeah. To do what we're doing, yeah. you know. It, we've got supporters. But, you know, 
we've raised maybe you know eight thousand yeah. dollars and we've spent a hundred thousand yeah. in infrastructure you know what i mean so we work has to be a priority Absolutely. You know? and i actually work at a place called community house which is we um provide programs and food and all sort like we we look after sort of vulnerable people so we also run a, a homeless house and we've also just purchased a takeaway business okay. that gives people opportunities um, for employment that may not actually have been given um, employment opportunity so we've had people like um, those with drug addictions yeah. that have just got out of jail um, we've had a young lad who's 18, had two kids, never worked in his mm -hmm. life. He stayed with us for 11 months or something and then moved on to another job. You know, that's the sort of yeah. stuff that makes you go tikka tucker, you yeah. know? So it's a pretty fun, emotional job, yeah. you know? Like, I can come home and I'm just so disappointed mm -hmm. with humans. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. um, last Friday I had a little... 11 year old who's caring for his you know mum and um she's got disabilities etc 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 so you know we're, we're working out how we can wash his clothes every yeah. week and and because he's going to school smelling and he's getting teased and that, that. you know all that sort of yeah. stuff just does my head yeah, in oh, how know. we can yeah. you know where's the teachers in this where's the doctors in this why is why is this even happening yeah. in this day and age you know what i mean yeah. Why is the system letting us down? Why is this coming to me? You know, I, I just, unbelievable, you know? So anyway, um, I come home and I'm, I'm usually pretty jumpy at him, but then we go out into the paddock and it's just like, yeah, it you all let it all away. go and, and you go, tomorrow's another day and yeah. I will try and make another change. But right this minute you've got, Eric, you know, just wanting to eat your T-shirt and, and Macy just, you know, sniffing your feet and, and and this one falling asleep on you and you just go, life is good. Yeah, yeah so I think for everything that we put in, you don't realise that it's um, um, having one bats fall asleep on your lap and cubs and kangaroos and kissing kangaroos and uh, ponies, it's become pretty normal for us, yeah. but you see, every now and then you take a step back and you think, yeah, that's, How pretty, do we do that's it? pretty yeah. special. Which is, which is, which is like, a, it's a funny world that we live in, you know. It's, um, you know, it's like I said, even, um, you know, getting, uh, um, you know, you know, some people, which is probably good for us, you know, they're not really overly interested in it. But maybe it's just our generation where uh, we're happy to give a bit back and, um, and can read a bit more into it. But, um, oh, when I was a young kid, I suppose I would have been the great, I'd have been dragged away somewhere the Wombat or uh, the kangaroo, but it's not. Not up there in the top ten anymore for um, for the generation, the, the younger generation. Yeah, through. It, it certainly so. seems to be a changing world, and you know, I mean, it's an incredible story for for both of you that you are, you know, so open hearted and that you're doing so many things. I, again, like yourselves, I had worked in uh, drug rehabilitation centres, and we've seen some of the peoples that I have... stalked you. You stalked me. I stalked you. <laughs> oh no, and another I one. You and found that out. Social media. And I was like, how cool is that? Yeah. We've got. So much to talk but, but that's about. what I'm finding with all of these guests that are on the show. There is a connection somewhere with because I, yeah, I, I'm, I'm one of these people that just loves to do a lot of different things, and that yeah. was one of my first things was I just wanted to help people and the stories that you find from people that are on the streets that you know I, I still remember 20 years on you know old Mick you know sleeping out in the streets rats running around him just down from the bus station people stealing his shoes but he was one of the happiest guys on the face of the planet and you think this is some real perspective here but then conversely like you said there were young kids that were getting pregnant at 16 because a lot of their social circumstances and situations and things and you know and, and I, I said exactly the same thing you know why isn't there more help and I think because people oftentimes they're having to do it by the system now as opposed to you know the yep. how can we help where is where originally rooted from you're not allowed to correct you're just not allowed yeah you've got to use processes correct you have to abide by procedures yeah. it takes us six weeks to get anything done yeah. which is why i'm really i got the best like we're, we run it the not-for-profit and i'm the manager coordinator but 
I've got a, a fantastic management committee and they like we've been able to program we get something like 75 grand no sorry 84 grand a year funding okay and what we do is just like amazing yeah. compared to you know we've got other organizations that are on 1.5 million yeah. you know up, up you know and we're st and, and these people are coming to us yeah to fix you know the problems because because i just go yep We'll do that. We've got the pan, you know, we've got this yeah, yeah. takeaway shop. We'll take the food around. We'll deliver, you know, mm -hmm. twice a week. We'll deliver uh, pantry food, the takeaway food around there free of charge. Um, we'll pick his, our delivery driver will pick his clothes up. We'll have them back within two days. You know, on, on Thursday, Tuesday night, we um, have a free community meal. We'll take up four lots, you know, four lots of that. Yeah. So that means you're only literally, there's four nights a week that you're set for food. You know, so you laugh and, and you've got your washing done. Now, how the hell can we get to your doctor yeah. and, and sort out some, you know, um, cleaning mm -hmm. uh, sort of facilities, sort of some help there? Because I can't, do, I, I just can't go into yeah. a private house. Yeah. That's not what we're about. Yeah, yeah. And, and we, we don't, we don't have that sort of, mm -hmm. um, you know, manpower to yeah. do that sort of stuff. But I don't even think, I don't. I don't have to go through, you know, 35 people and 35 different pieces of paper. I just go, here's the problem, let's fix it. Yeah, yeah. You're not allowed to do that I, these I think days. the big part of the, the problem now has become, again, and, and certainly over here, it's the big salaries. And that's, you know, and yes, all the red tape. That's, it's but but you know. the thing is, what people forget is, you know, if you are doing something that is really helping other people, you know, people always think as money is the end goal. Money is a tool that comes along as a result of the good things oftentimes that you're doing and people supporting you and everything else. And if you think about it as a tool as opposed to, you know, well, money's my end goal. If, if money's only going to be your end goal, then you're not going to be happy very long because you're always going to want more and more and more of it. And there's never going to be enough. Whereas when you start it's really... the passion. Well, well, that's it. That's it. And that's the problem, I think, for so many people now. And that's why, certainly over here in the UK, the countries are getting bled dry because you've got... Cats are really amazing, aren't they? From the way that they lay to the way that they look up at you, I love cats. Do you know what I love even more? Painting cats. That's right. I love creating amazing masterpieces for clients and customers from around the world. I'm John Morris, and over the last 18 years, I have painted cats of all shapes and sizes. From white fluffy cats, to black grass hiding cats, from big cats to small cats, and even snuggly cats. I've painted them all. And if you're looking for something unique, special, made to last, and hand-painted, then you, my friend, have come to the right place. So click that link below, get in touch with me today for a special, free, no obligation quote. Remember, spaces are limited, so do not delay. Get in touch today, and let's create something amazing that your cats will be proud of. So many politicians on 100 grand plus, and you're sitting there thinking, okay, well, I'm seeing you falling asleep on TV. Why on earth am I paying you? You know, and because it's all the taxes and everything that go for it. But that's a whole other <laughs> subject. That's a whole different story. But on that topic, yeah. um, we actually we actually asked... Um, David Spears, our environment mm -hmm. um, minister and minister of environment, to um, to Tucson Sanctuary. We we've got a really great um, 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 uh, Peter Law. What's a member for Flinders? Okay. So our member for Flinders in our area, he told us that the environment, the minister of environment, was coming, and I said, right, no worries. When? Oh, it's been postpone, postponed. Oh, yeah he's postponed it oh yeah this went on for months wow. and i just kept stalking him you know like peter i'm gonna keep stalking you i want to see this guy i need to yeah. see this guy anyway sure enough he rang up and he goes we've got 15 minutes window yeah can you meet us at the office and i said nah you take him out here you bring him out to community house you know and the guy came he came with all his mob yeah. you know they fed the kangaroos they were just blown out at you guys are setting these rules up. Yeah. You actually make the rules. Now, here's the cost to us mm -hmm. with no help from the government. Here's what it costs us to do it properly. And he was so, um, what's the word? He, he just, 
couldn't couldn't you know say good th- more good yeah. things about it. You know, like he was so understanding. He he couldn't you know he actually took a hundred bucks out of his own pocket wow. and gave it to him. He's, he's a very active. Um, he's, he's very. very active. He was a good man. You know. So a lot of people hear hear you know bad things, but. Well, you know, I don't, I don't get to make too many of them, but you know, only the ones that I'm passionate about. Yeah. And um, and our Peter Trelaw, he's a great bloke, and so was this David Spears. It was the first time I met him, and he was interactive with the animals. He, he, he yeah, he he was um, he wanted to make a difference. That's I, I know what you, know? you mean, though, with the, with the big salaries. We worked it out one day. It's um. Oh, it'd be strangely gratifying, I suppose, to come out of the toilet and know that you've made sort of four hundred dollars while you're in there yeah. doing your business. Yeah. You know, but, uh, <laughs> it's uh, uh, it's terrible. We had it. Uh, we we used to break down salaries from you know from you know, from years to, to weeks to days yeah. to oh there's still a, there's still a quite a big pole, so let's break it down to hours and oh there's still enough to break it down into minutes. Wow. So, but it doesn't matter how much people make. Like, no, no, it doesn't right. matter if you make more than me and yeah. I make more than him. Da, 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 da. What matters is what you do with it. Correct. Yeah, you know, like if, if these people made four hundred thousand and supported a free community meal program each yeah. year, I wouldn't give a rat. Yeah. Do you know what Absolutely. I mean? In fact, I don't give a rat anyway. You know, like um, that—that's their prerogative. Mm-hmm. It's—it's it's, you know what's in here. It's what's in here yeah. that is at the end of the day. You know, they can make all this money. But if they're barren and unhappy and they yeah. can only find happiness with what they buy, they're not going to ever experience real happiness. And I feel sad for them, yeah. you know? So Absolutely. money is the root of all evil unless it is spent correctly. Yeah. yeah. I want to ask you as oh, well. Oh, you, sorry, go on. Yeah. Oh, no, sorry. Like you said, it's, um, oh, it's, it's a tool. Uh, and like a, a tool for anything, um, you know, you, you look after it, um, use it wisely, use it for the, the right purpose, and um, like I said, it, it helps um, uh, It helps you in life to get along. You know, it helps you finish the job you're doing, doing what you want. Um, don't try and use that tool for the wrong job. You know, don't tackle too big a job That's for your it. tool. You know, if you, if you sort of just um, pace through, it's always going to be a tricky one, I suppose. Yeah. Um, I think as um, you get a bit older, you get a bit different mm-hmm. with, with, with money. Um, I think as long as... Um, it needs to be two ways. You know, I think uh, people up here don't need to look any differently on people down here yeah. as people down here shouldn't look any differently yeah. to, to people up there. You know, it's, uh, I always think here, unfortunately, with the tax thing, if, if, if you want to work three jobs and work three times as hard, you should have three times the reward. Yeah, you know, absolutely. So, I want so. to ask you as well, because obviously uh, last year in particular, 2019, uh, obviously for, for folks that are watching this in the future, um, it helps to have a date. But there are so many natural occurrences that are going on around the world right now, particularly in the United States, but also in, in Australia and in New Zealand, when we're talking about the forest fires and literally they claim so much life all across the uh, all across the United States, but also in Australia. And, you know, I think there was conversations that were just like, you know, six months, nine months after all these things had happened, there were still, you know, in certain areas, forest fires that were going on and just didn't stop. And you're asking that question, does it ever stop? How did it affect you guys, if at all, and obviously with your sanctuary? So we had a, a fire that came through with 80 kilometre 80 kilometer an hour winds. Wow. Uh, on the uh, December the... Yeah, a month before the, a month before the flooding. Right. Uh, yeah, so basically we had, you know, don't quote me on, on the date, but it was like the 12th of December. Right. Yeah, we had um, bushfire went through, and it was just one of those shocking yeah. days. Two houses were lost. Well, what we classed as a catastrophic one. Thankfully, it was on the unpopulated side of the town. Okay. Um, only probably um, very got really close yeah. to. Yeah, probably, town. yeah, it did. I suppose probably we were lucky. as the crow flies. Probably only um, three or four kilometres from here, but thankfully fed by a. And it um, didn't change. The wind didn't change. Like we, yeah. we seriously all left work. We were home. Our plan, our fire plan is to stay and mm-hmm. protect the animals. And we've got fire units with, with, with you know, who, who, can, who can say you're set up, you yeah. know what I mean, yeah. those sort of situations. Oh, but... Instead of fishing boats and 
caravans. We've got uh, five, five units. units um, we've got sprinklers down on the kangaroo shelter. Yeah. Just to try and make we're... it safe for both ourselves and the animals to stay. Mm -hmm. Thankfully, where we are, it's, um, um, unfortunately, northerlies are, are our bad day. Yeah. Um, and there's a lot of vegetation um, you know, in that direction for us. Uh, all the westerly, which seems to be the issues that we've had around the town here, okay. uh, thankfully not as bad as Kangaroo Island and a few other places, yeah. but um, um, we're probably a lot, if a fire comes to us from that direction, it's mainly, um, uh, it's just heavily grassed, you know, it's, it's farmed a little bit further over for, for hay and that, so we just have embers and, and a grass fire, which would be a lot easier to um we're fire. really, what, what Bronte's trying to say is we are totally um, aware and we... You know, bushfire is paramount to yeah. us every single year. Of course. We work every single year to have, you know, the, the grass down, the, yeah. you know, every year. We've, we've experienced, like we had, when was the long fire? Three oh, okay. years ago, three, four years ago, mm -hmm. we, we had, death, you know, humans die. Yeah. Um, our grandmother and her two grandchildren wow. were burnt to death. Um, a, a mother and her two children... It was just horrid, yeah. horrid, horrid. And that every year, um, it's just scary stuff. But in saying that, um, you know, this year was out of control. Mm -hmm. It was just ridiculous. Yeah. Like, that, that, the fact that there was no control. Yeah. They couldn't get control back. It was just unbelievable it was scary it was all of those things everybody but you know what nicked me off the most job that there was so many people that cashed in mm -hmm. and didn't you know didn't um put them funds that they actually made i you know we know of a personally of someone who made over one hundred and sixty thousand dollars wow. all in the name of um, you know, wildlife, and I know that they've passed on maybe seven thousand dollars of it. Uh -huh. you know, that is, you know, there's people that are still not got a house to live in. Yeah. You know, and these are big companies. These are big organisations mm -hmm. that took ten millions, millions and millions of dollars. Yeah. And you know, I am all for, all for. Um, getting a village to raise the yeah, child, right? I'm all for the generosity, but the transparency afterward yeah. is so important. Yeah. And, and you know, we, we get, well, uh, for two songs, we get, um, you know, we've got a GoFundMe situation, <laughs> we've got this, we got that. I'm forever showing people, taking yeah. photos. This is where the money was yeah, yeah. spent, yeah. you know what I mean? You can't just take and then, yeah. you know, I think we saw That's that in so, um, I think everybody... You know, we've got Kang Kangarala, Kangala Rescue. Mm -hmm. Kangala Rescues. K-A-N-G-A-L-A -A -A Rescue. A lady called Lisa. She's still dealing with, you know, um, kangaroos that came out of that Kangaroo wow. Island bushfire, which was horrific. She's trying to get together enough uh, money to, you know, fence, I think it's 17 acres. And she's struggling. Yeah. And I said, are you shitting me? You know, you guys made millions yeah. of bucks. Wow. It would cost, what, you know, twenty, thirty thousand dollars $30,000 to do what you're doing? That should be just taken yeah. out of petty cash. Yeah. yeah. Unfortunately, um, that's, uh, especially there, because, you know, we, we had um, so much around here, but like I said, Kangaroo Island fires, which, which were very bad, and koalas were all the, uh, all the, all the talk down there. Yeah. Everybody was fundraising towards koalas, but but no, look, we were lucky in Lincoln. The, for some people, not so lucky, but um, it's well, been, two houses um, were lost. Yeah, it's yeah. been a few years since we've had a massive fire. We had a um, the one big fire. Yeah, yeah, we had a duck pond fire here. Oh, look, every year we've had something that's made us very nervous. We had a uh, quite a large um, burn off got out of control and, and ran away. Once again, thankfully, we didn't have a wind change to bring it right at us. Yeah. But it was another fire. You know, within. You know, only within and five the five kilometres is not very far if things go wrong. But um, but everyone knows yeah. the story. Everyone knows how you know freaked out everyone gets. Yeah. And the coppers told us that there's about five people that they actually watch uh -huh. because they they yeah. they like them on yeah. the purpose. Oh, like, on a happy uh, yeah, on a happy note, um, we didn't put, quite figure out what was going on. But uh, last night, just for an example, we were out at the at the one enclosure, which is in front of the property. Um, 
and uh, we have a stream of about eight of the CFS trucks. They're um, the country fire service trucks. Uh, they had their tanker, their trucks, their, their different units, the first response ones. Um, they were actually driving the whole neighbourhood and driving into all of our... Um, we live at the end of... Um, it's a cul-de-sac, basically. Um, they were driving their vehicles into all of the streets to make sure that they had access to drive in and turn around wow. um, and do the whole That's neighbourhood. So cool. That's yeah. in preparation for the summer, but... Um, I thought that was quite good. They, you know, they need to know where they can safely go. Um, thankfully, they can get to our place quite safely and, and also to get away. But, um, yeah, our, our bushfire plan uh, is to, to, to stay because, unfortunately, um, it, uh, it's probably the best option for, for all our animals to, to release them. Yeah. Um, you know, open gates and shoot them away would be... Um, probably wouldn't end well. Yeah. Um, try and transport them, especially the kangaroos. They have... Um, uh, stress is probably a very great killer uh, of these guys if they're not handled properly. And, um, you know, so transporting. Look, some of them would transport fine, some we would bring They indoors. end up in our house. Yeah. yeah. You know, in our bed. Yeah. But, so, um, yeah. And we all know that, you know. Yeah. And, we've, um, and we've set it up so we can, um, uh, we think pretty safely look after ourselves because we need to look after ourselves to look after yeah. the animals. But we've, um, uh, we've just got extra tanks in, as I said, no fishing boats or uh, golf clubs here. It's, uh, we, we're straight on to um, uh, improvements if we can. Oh, sorry, it's going to quickly rearrange. A little um, munchkin here. She's uh, having a great time. There's two more in the houses over there. Uh, they've, they've been very, um, very good. It's amazing just to watch. It really is. <laughs> uh, just how good. <laughs> yeah, that's our normal, um, no, that's our normal routine. Who knows? Now we're in a different so position. When, when you've got five kids, right? <laughs> and they're all thought? under the age, five kids all under the age of like seven and a half. Oh, I'll, I'll, let, I'll give you a bit of a leeway. Ring me back up and tell me what that's like. That would be and my then idea you'll know what every day's like you. <laughs> <laughs> I wanted to ask you as well, you know, looking forward, I suppose, into the future, you talked a little bit about the work that you're doing. Talk to us a little bit more in terms of what the next stages are now going to be for the Animal Sanctuary. Uh, well, we've, we're, we're really close to finishing the Wombat Clip. Okay. Like, soon up on um, Instagram, we will be um, putting Maxim and Wadu into their enclosure and that will just be like party and um so that'll that'll release a lot of our time yeah. be because at the moment they're in small of enclosures they're in enclosures that the government tell us we have to have okay. but in our mind um it is just way too small for an animal to live for the next 30 to 35 yeah. years with mental stimulation yeah. You know, we've got to take a holistic approach mm -hmm. and, like, not only feed them, but give them mental stimulation. A lot of aggression comes from if they don't... If, you know, there's... People say this and that and this and that, but it's it's about how they're treated, yeah. you know? So, yeah. I think, um, I think moving through the, like, the years, as I said, um, you know, we've got 20-odd you know, years of kangaroos, 30-odd years of wombats. They, they live their life. I think the, the horses, you know, to about 20... I think we've worked out that both our animals and ourselves, we're all going to die about the same time. Right. So that'll <laughs> we'll be it. But I, I think um, what we do, we, we've got to um, probably um, you know, be very protective of, of our mob. Yeah. Um, you know, there's always space for um, local emergencies mm -hmm. and that. But, but through with uh, what we're doing, and as you're saying, with social media and the, and the network of people throughout the state and the country that we've um, got involved with, it's, um, it's nice to know that... Um, uh, you know, we can still help place animals, we still help guide yeah. people. You know, there's new carers, uh, you know, coming um, on oh, board yeah. all the time. Um, you know, by showing them what we've done and, and by you know, helping them with information. So, as, as much as you know, like I said, in, in ten years' time, we won't have 150 kangaroos. Yeah. You know, we may have 35 kangaroos, but you know, we'll um, be selected to keep our, our mob balance mm -hmm. with boys versus girls and um, and that sort of thing. Um, there's always the emergency local one, yeah. you know, that you, you can't help. And but once you cuddle them in a bag on your lap for a while and get used to them. But look, the, we, we've got a network of carers, you know, uh, uh, you know, others in town. Probably, and sanctuary. Uh, yeah. uh, you know, in Wyler and Adelaide and, you know, within the state. Um, because our state's 
rules are a little bit different to the rest yeah. of the country, but but that, that's what we'll do in the future. Um, you know, I'm, I'm sure we'll certainly um, we'll, we'll keep adding to our uh, our group. But um, I think um, you know that's that's where we can sort of help by um, you know, any new carers coming on board yeah. uh, to to give them a bit of an idea. And, and it, look, it, it's just um, uh, it's great to have God. Yeah. We've, we've got a, a, a couple of mentors. Um, finicky people, um, us carers, you've got to, um, like anything, I suppose, if you ask for advice, you've got to find a little bit of advice you want and ignore yeah. uh, all, of the, uh, uh, all of the rest that comes in. So that, that's with anything. Yeah. But, um, but no, that's probably where we'll be. You know, I'm sure we'll um, continue to always improve uh, where we can. Um, our yard is... Um, oh, what's happened there, isn't it? <laughs> we get called, come through it and blanked out. Uh, yeah, ah. Uh, are you, am I with you? Uh, there you go. Yep. Yeah. Sort of. Are you can see me. I can't see you. I can't see you yet. I, I could see you. It's oh, just yeah, gone up again. again. There we go. You're back. But sorry, well, yeah, I think uh, going forward, yeah, that's where we'll be. You know, we'll always, oh, we'll always improve the facilities here. We'll always try and make sure that you know bigger if we can. Um, I'm sure our numbers will will increase, yeah, but not not yeah. majorly. And as I said, just our, our network of people is, is growing all the time. Um, and um, you know, we're starting to, um, uh, look, yeah, it's nice that people are starting to, to look at us now. We were very much the new the new crew, yeah. but now, um, you know, we can sort of share our experiences. And, and we uh, hope that we can leave this legacy to somebody else. Yeah. Like, when, like, basically, all our animals have died the same time we do, if we live to 85. Yeah. And, they, and hopefully we can find, you know, someone to leave all of this yeah. infrastructure to so then they can carry yeah. on. Yeah, that's that's the big one, isn't it? I, I want to ask you as well, following on that, because the people that are watching this really understand the the importance. Talk to us in your own words the importance of this sanctuary. Why is it so important, not just to yourselves and to the people, but also to the animals? Because animals don't have a voice. No one. That's how, a great answer. If, if if animals don't have a voice and no one listens and no yeah. one, I mean, really listens. You know, you can tell exactly how they're feeling by looking at their eyes. You know, eyes of an animal can tell a thousand, yeah. speak a thousand words. So if if we don't actually listen, and I mean not with our ears, but with all our other sensories, yeah. where the hell are our grandkids' kids' kids are going to be? Yeah, I think it's just Seriously. Teaching, teaching people that dance. These, these little guys have had... Uh, you know, usually by human hand, had everything, everything yeah. taken from them. Yeah. Um, they, they, they have no prospect of flourishing or, or surviving. And it's nice, that I suppose, that, that human hands can, can give them a little bit back. Yeah. Um, and, uh, as I said, like, so they don't have a voice and, and they don't have, they have nothing else. So it's, um, it's, it's great to sort of know that they can have a slightly modified life, but, um, but they get to... Uh, yeah, that they actually get, get to, to uh, have a life, which is, is wonderful. Where can folks go? Because yeah. this part's really important. Where can folks go if they want to donate to your cause, your sanctuary and everything, and if they want to find you guys on social media to find out more about you? To your own sanctuary. There you go, simple as that. <laughs> and spelled and spell like the number two, yeah. T-W-O. And we'll certainly so put we up all the links the place... and everything. Yeah, yeah, yeah we, that, we, that, we that, actually um, yeah. we put... We actually called it Two Songs Sanctuary. We called it Two Songs because it takes two songs to get from my work to here. Right. <laughs> so that's why we called it Two Songs. That's because fantastic. That's how it is, you know? So, um, and, um, and, and they can follow us on Instagram. I, I um, sort of, I've got a Facebook we, we page, a, but I don't really do yeah. Facebook yeah. much. We, we have a link to our GoFundMe, uh, yeah, which on, is on the Instagram page. The, that's the easiest way. We've got a to. PayPal thing. But apparently that's a bit hard. Oh, see, I'm not very good with technology, <laughs> um, as you already know. And you're very lucky because we're a bit sketchy yeah. out here with internet. Um, I mean, a lot of people have, cool. and that's the really awesome thing, that so far every call has gone through pretty much, you know, A-OK -okay and everything. But we'll certainly put up the link, yeah. obviously, for, for, uh, for your GoFundMe, so people that are watching this can really reach out. Because this is now going to be going out to a worldwide audience, which is fantastic, and I'm so... So delighted. Is there anything else that you want to touch on that we haven't discussed during our time together? I wish I had a wall, more makeup now that I know that. <laughs> I wish but, I got my hair cut. Yeah, I wish, I wish I had got your hair cut. 
<laughs> like, no, no, we're just doing, look, yeah, seriously, okay. we're not, we're not doing anything um, amazing or anything. We're just doing the best with what we've got, you know what I mean? And um, we just appreciate any little bit of help yep. that we can get. We, we are doing it real hard. Ah, oh, it's ringing me. She really wants to talk to me. See, I've got friends. <laughs> um, I think people, if they can just um, look at, look at, I guess, um, you know, if they get a bit of joy just even watching our videos yeah. and, and seeing what goes on, and, and it might just give people a bit of an understanding and just make them think a little bit about, uh, as I said, um, you know, Australia, we're not unique to orphan mm -hmm. wildlife at all. You know, every country and everywhere um, has got There's uh, bears, yeah. Yeah. you know, like the bears in cages. There's so much horrific stuff yeah. and animals have been treated horrifically. Yeah. If they don't want to help, you know, it's not just us that need help. Yeah. We need to be able to find that balance mm -hmm. where greed isn't the most important thing. Yeah. We don't have to mutilate a bear and make him dance for money. And we don't have to ride an elephant. We're quite happy to sit there and watch them in the wild. Yeah. But, even, you, um, you know? yeah. but even the little orphan ones, I suppose, like we say, that. Um, not everyone's going to care for a kangaroo that's going to whittle and do the wrong thing here or any of that. But, uh, you know, it, like we say to people, if um, if you've seen enough to see that they are lovely animals and they can provide you with a bit of joy, um, if it just makes people like, especially in Australia, stop and check it out. Yep. Uh, if they've got the baby, they might better pass it on, uh, save another a life. As I said, it's um, I've always... Uh, they're, they're, our poor little kangaroos have been... Um, uh, because we live in an area, so I'm trying to get it out, where farmers perhaps don't really agree with having too many of them. Um, our little guys have been removed. Probably, you know, I said not by their choice from the kangaroo population. Yeah. So, you know, that's where, um, you know, it's great that we can give them their own separate little um, life uh, in, in a, like, once again, a slightly modified sort of um, capacity to what they normally have. But, but I think if people can just, um, yeah, if they just, um, if they get joy from them, it helps educate them a bit to... Um, just to care a little bit. You know, yeah. if you, you see a, a herd animal or something, you might not better do anything, but if you, you but might don't, have enough don't conscience to, um, yeah. Yeah, you might have enough conscience to, um, to, to help out in some other way. And, 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 you know, like, and I just want to emphasise that sometimes when you help others, you go out and you help others, you're actually helping yourself yeah. in the long run. Yeah. So you might not understand that until you actually do reach out Absolutely. and help somebody else. But once you actually make that move and, and understand that there's a balance, it's great to earn money, it's great to have security in a job, it's great to go home to a nice flash house, but there's more yeah. than material things in life. There is so much more. Until you can fill your heart with some guts yeah. then you got nothing yeah. and, and and that's where I'm I try to to get people to realize it sometimes when you get out of it's all about me world and reach out yeah. to others your world gets so much bigger yeah. and so much better yeah and and that's what I keep sharing with folks on this show in fact is that I've made a living out of being honest with people and desiring to really help people wherever they're at, whether it's with anxiety, depression, through these interviews, through educating people like we've done, in your case tonight, in my case this morning, um, you know, and inspiring people hopefully that they can make a difference with whatever skills and gifts that they've got. And it's been an absolutely amazing uh, conversation I've had with you. I've absolutely loved it. And you know, we'll be doing everything we can to help you guys because you know, folks, that the heart of, of these two wonderful people, first and foremost, from my perspective, that they're not only running this sanctuary, but also that they're going out to work, they're going to help people in all sorts of different circumstances from all walks of life as well. That to me is worth helping, and that just speaks volumes to me. So, I want to thank you both so much for your time, it's been an absolute pleasure. Uh, to have you on the show and like I say we'll be putting up the links to your GoFundMe page we'll definitely be getting people to, to get in touch with you on your uh, Instagram feed and everything and it's been an absolute pleasure go for it I just want to say one thing because I always talk <laughs> I just want to in, um, reassure people too and encourage people you said to them to, for them to use their skills <laughs> you know to help others everybody has a skill too even if they don't know it, you know, like uh, everyone's got strengths, everyone's got weaknesses. So just really encourage yourself and, and 
I, I employ people to to really look inside themselves and find their strength, whatever that might be. To 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 challenge themselves to get over the the shitty part of the world and and make it better. Only you can do it. Absolutely, absolutely. Yeah. And it's fantastic. <laughs> And we want to give a big special thank you to Linda and Bronte Davis and the two sons, two songs sanctuary. I'm tripping over my own teeth. Bro. Two songs sanctuary. There you go. Say that three times fast. Um, but it's been an absolute blast. I have been your host, John Morris. They have been wonderful, wonderful guests. And we've got a sleepy kangaroo. Um, this has been the Mind, Body and Soul yep. podcast, helping you find balance in the craziness of day to day life. Don't forget to hit the like, share and subscribe button. Tell a friend because it helps our little business grow, but also because it may be the very thing that helps somebody else. And it's been an absolute pleasure. Folks, we're out of time. Have a great week. Take care. God bless. And we will see you soon. Thank you. Thank you.